6.5. Amen. Stay with me. Amen. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, that's what I want. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Do you hear? We shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Do you hear? Our old man, the Bible says, is crucified with him. It says we have been planted together in his likeness of his death. We shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth, we should not serve sin. So you say you got the spirit. You say you got the Holy Ghost. So you should not be out serving sin. Not out, we don't not out serving sin. But the Bible lets us know if we do sin, we ain't out serving sin. But if we, something happens and we do sin, that that we don't even know about, the Bible lets us know we have an advocate with the Father. We have a mediator who's mediating on our behalf. Amen. That that you done done, you don't even know you done done, that's against God. Amen. You have an advocate with the Father. But we're not out seeking sin. Amen. We're not out doing that. Listen to what it says in that. For he that is dead is freed from sin. If you are dead to sin, you're freed from sin. You ain't never seen no dead man sin. Do you hear? You ain't never seen a dead man out sinning. Amen. If you're dead to sin, you're free. Listen to what it says in, uh, in, in, in 7 again. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, listen to what, 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 uh, what uh, Paul is saying here. If we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. If we be dead with Christ, we went into the liquid grave. Amen. Once we went down in water, glory to God, and the washing away of our sins, we died with Christ. Amen. And when we came up out the water, we risen with him. Amen. Into a newness of life. Listen to what it says here. For if that he died. Now let's go back up to, to eight. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Jesus Christ ain't going to die no more now. He done died one time. And he's not going to die no more. Listen. Death hath no more dominion over him. For if that he died, he died unto sin once. You hear that? You see, Christ is not going to die no more. Nobody else is coming down here to die for your sin. For he died once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. He's only going to die once. He only died once. He's not coming to die again for nobody. He's not coming to die for nobody. But he that, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. That life now, you that new creature, that life you're supposed to live now is unto God. Not out serving your flesh. Listen to what it says in there. In 11. Likewise, the Bible says, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You need to be dead to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Listen to what it says in there. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof, of unrighteousness unto sin. 
but yield yourselves unto God. As those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. 14 say, for sin shall not have dominion over you. Do you hear that? Sin should not have dominion over you. If you have the spirit of God in you, the Holy Ghost, sin should not have dominion over you. Now, if you sin, that's a choice you made. Because when you have the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, now you should have power. So now if you sin, it isn't because you had, didn't have power. It's because that's what you chose to do. Amen. You have power not to sin when you have the Spirit. The, the Holy Ghost. Listen to what it says in that. It says, in 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Listen to what Paul going to say now. He said, but what then? You know, people like to use that. We're not under the law no more. We're under grace. We're not under the law. We're under grace. Okay. But listen to what Paul going to say. Paul say, well, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? So just because we're not under the law, we're under grace, shall we just go out and start sinning? Listen to what Paul said. God forbid. God forbid. Listen to what he said. Know ye not that to whom ye yield your servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. You yield your servants to obey the devil, that you are his servants. You lend yourself servants to do the Lord's will, then you are his servants. Because the Bible says, to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are, to whom ye obey. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. To whoever you yield yourself servants to, That's who you obey. What we're talking about becoming a new creature. When you become a new creature in Christ, all of those worldly things, those old things, is passed away. All of it's passed away. Amen. We become a new creature. Amen. We strive to serve the Lord. Amen. And there's a price to pay. When you come in this way, hear me, there's a price to pay. You're going to lose some along the way. Yeah, You're going to lose. Father might not see it. Mother might not see it. Your sister might not see it. Your brothers might not see it. None of your family might not be able to see it. And for that cause, you'll lose some along the way. But don't fret, saints, in well-doing. The Bible lets us know we was going to lose something. So there's no need to marvel at that. Everybody don't want to walk this walk. Everybody that claim that they got the Lord or know the Lord don't know him. To know the Lord is to be in the Lord. Amen. You say you're doing the Lord's will, but doing it the opposite of what the Lord said to do. The Bible says you're a liar, and the truth is not in you. Simple as that. You're not doing the Lord's will, the Bible says, and you say that you are. The Bible says, let God's word be true, and every man a liar. Let's just go to the scripture. I don't have to say nothing. Let's just go to the scripture. Amen. Let God be true and every man alive. Let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians 4. It's not going to be before you long. Ephesians 4. Amen. But the word of God is true. Ephesians 4, 22 is what I want. Word of God is true. Amen. We're not here to excite you. 
I'm not here to uh, perform. We're not, I'm not an entertainer. I'm here for you to walk with me through the scripture. Show you the word of God. Amen. Time out for all the hooting, hollering, and jumping around. What did the Bible say? We become a new creature. Amen. Old things are passed away. All things become new. Amen. You go to the car lot and go spend your hard-earned money on a new car. Man, here they trot out an old Pinto huh, for the same price. You'll have a fit. Why? Because you know that's not new. But here you is, want to give God all your leftovers. Amen. Every time the word is read, you want to fight. Listen, you're not opposing the preacher. You're opposing God. Amen. You got to get this walk for yourself. All the preacher can do is just teach and preach the word. You got to receive it. But the Bible lets us know that everybody is not going to receive it. They are rejected. They rejected Jesus in the day when he was walking the land. Had the Messiah right there in front of them. And they rejected him. Bible said he came to his own and his own received him not. I thank the Lord for that. That opened up the door for the Gentile. Amen. Bible says Jesus broke down that middle wall of petition between the Jew and the Greek, the Jew and the Gentile. Now we all got to come the same way. We all got to come the same way. Amen. Same way. You can't make it to heaven no other way but through and by Jesus Christ. And if you come any other way, the Bible lets us know that you are a thief and a robber. Believe all that foolishness that you cannot read. Hold on to all those traditions that you've been taught that you cannot read. Jesus said, I shall pay. He's going to pay you. Vengeance is mine. You've been warned. The word comes to you and you won't receive it. Jesus said, I'm going to pay you. I'm going to give you a reward of your doing. You're going to get paid. Amen. You're going to get paid for that that you do. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. These old conversations you used to have, you don't talk like that no more. Amen. You're not out cursing. Not out using the N-word all over the place. You know when you was out in the world, when you use the N-word, you know you, was, you, you, know you didn't mean no good. We, the people of God, we change our talk. Okay, man. We change our talk. New creature. You still cursing and doing all that profanity and all this old foul language. You're still of the devil. Ain't nothing new about you. You're still an old creature. You're still an old creature. Amen. Listen to what it says. Ephesians 4, 22. Listen to what it says. That ye put off concerning the former conversations. Do you see that? The old man. I would say you got to put that off. Those old conversations you used to have with that old man you used to be, I would say you got to put that off. Listen to what it said. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Those conversations you used to have, you're not talking like that no more. No, you're not, you're not you, you ain't got together with the fellas and all y'all talking about is women. No, you don't do that. Amen. Those old conversations. The deceitful lust. We're not having no conversations no more. Amen. Not having them no more. 22 says again that you put off concerning the former conversations. The old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Listen to what 23 say. And be renewed. 
in the spirit of your mind. You got, when you come this way, you got to renew your mind. All that you thought you knew, you have to count it but don't. You have to count it but don't. All that you thought you knew. Paul said it this way. All that I thought that I have gained in the Jews' religion, Paul said, I count it lost that I may gain Christ. So all that you thought you had done to gain, all that you thought you knew, but when you come this way, the Bible says you have to count it but lost. Count it but dung. Renew your mind with the word of God. Chapter and verse. Amen. This is the only thing that can save you. Do you hear? Is this word. Paul said you're saved through and by the word that I preached unto you. You go around and listen to all these foolishness if you want. But you better pay attention and take heed to the word of God. Amen. The word of God. Let's go to Galatians. Galatians 5th chapter. Let's go there. Let's go back a couple pages. Galatians 5th chapter. That's what I want. Galatians 5 24. Galatians 5 24. Listen. If you're living in the in the spirit. You know what you got to do? If you're living in the spirit, if you're walking in the spirit, you got to uh, uh, walk like you got the spirit. Act like you got the spirit. Huh? Look like you got the spirit. Talk like you got the spirit. Do you hear? Everybody claiming they got the spirit of God, but you need to walk like it, talk like it, act like it, live like it. Sunday Christians. Monday morning, they cussing you out. Amen? Cussing you out. Amen? You got to look like you got it. Just don't say that you got the Spirit. Just don't say that you got the Holy Ghost. But you got to walk like it. Act like it. Now, if you're still cussing every now and then, Something slip out. Huh? And you were talking about, oh, uh, 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 excuse my French. That ain't no French. That's profanity. Do you hear? That's profanity. God knows. Listen to it now. Galatians 5, 24. Listen to what it says. Listen to what it says. And they that are Christ, listen now, they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. They crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. Listen, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Do you hear what it said? If you live in the spirit, you got to walk in the spirit. Do you hear? Let's read that again. 24 says, and they that are Christ's, if you belong to God, if you belong to Jesus Christ, listen to what it said, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Listen now. So if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory in, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. But I'm here to tell you. Profanity, these cursing saints, man, I tell you, they something. Run around talking about every time you uh, hear them or something, on social media, so God this, God that. God this, thank God for this, thank God for that, thank God for this. Then something happened and they on there just is cussing and cussing and cussing. Do you understand? No Holy Ghost. No Holy Ghost. Cursing saints. Let me show you what James said about cursing saints. Let's go to James 1. Let's go to James 1. Uh, 
126. That's what we want. We want James 126. Let me show you what James said about these old cursing saints. James 126. Everybody just wants to live and do anything, old thing that they want to do and talking about that they're serving God. We just want to teach them. We're not riled up today. Just chapter and verse. Amen. Let me show you what James said about these cursing saints. Listen to what James said. James 1, 26. Listen to what it says here now. If any man among you seem to be religious. Listen now. It didn't say was religious. It just say seem to be. You got them around here. They just seem to be. Every time you, every time you turn around, you can't go see one every time you see it. Bow tie in the Bible up under his arm. Bow tie in the Bible. Old devil. Huh? He just seems to be religious. Make him mad. Curse you out. But the Bible said, if any man, listen now, if any among you seem to be religious, just seem, listen now, and bridleth not his tongue, but he can't bridle his tongue. He seemed to be religious, but he can't bridle his tongue. For some reason, he just can't bridle that tongue. Oh, he's always saying something out the way. He cannot bridle that tongue. What did the Bible say? But deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. He seemed to be religious, but he cannot bridle that tongue. That man's religion is vain. What he declared to have, that Holy Ghost, that Spirit of God that he declares to have, the Bible said it's no good. It's vain. It's vain now. That, that he declared declare that he has, it's vain. Listen, listen to what uh, 27 said. Pure religion. Pure religion. That's what you need to have. Pure religion and undefiled before God. Pure religion. <coughs> Pure religion. Undefiled before God. And the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Curse of the saints. Boy, I tell you. And people think that they on their way to the kingdom. No Holy Ghost. But I'm here to tell you, except you repent. Amen. Yeah, Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but in the name. The Bible says there's power in the name. Let you go down and repent, believe. First, you got to have a belief. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus and him crucified. Repent. Go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Call on the Lord for the gift of the Holy Ghost. And how you know you will have it is with the evidence of speaking in tongues. How? As the Spirit give utterance. Amen. Until you've had that, until you have done that, to the Lord has given you the Holy Ghost for that evidence of speaking in tongues, you are none of his. You go to church every Sunday, wasting your time. You need to be saved, sanctified, set apart, filled with the Holy Ghost. Then you'll stop doing all this foolishness, living over any kind of way. Because you'll have something to hold you. All people want to do now is come to church, hoop and holler an hour and a half, jump around and all of this and that, oh, they're feeling good, walling all over the floor and running around the church like they're at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Leave here talking about they're feeling good. As soon as they get out of here, I go back in their car and pick up their cigarette shelf. Or go back to their trunk and, and, and pick up their liquor bottle. And 
talking about they delivered. It's just the truth that they have. Listen. Let's go to James 3. James 3rd chapter. I want James 3 and 3. Listen to it. Only one can control that tongue. And that's the Holy Ghost. Only one thing can control that tongue. That is the Holy Ghost. You got to run around here and they cannot tame that tongue. They don't have what they say they have. Cursing and drinking saints. But want to preach to you the Bible. Amen. Their religion is vain. They don't have what they say they have. They need Jesus. They need to be saved. They need the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. James 3 and 3. Listen to what it says here. Behold. Listen, listen now. He's going to do the rundown. This is what James is going to do now. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Do you hear that? We can put a bit in the horse's mouth, that little old bit into his mouth, and that big old horse, you can control that horse with that bit. Do you hear? Listen to what it says now. He says here in four, Behold, also the ships, you know these big old ships, oh, baby, uh, we can make some big old grand ships nowadays. But listen, Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, these ships are great now, and are driven of fierce wind, yet they turn about with a very small hand. And whithersoever the governor listed, you got a very small ham controlling that big old ship. Big old ship now, a very small ham controlling it. And you can turn that ship anywhere you want it to go. Even with the winds pushing on it. But listen, at five, even so the tongue, do you hear that? <clears throat> even so the tongue, listen, is a little member. A tongue is a little member of the body. And boast of great things. Now, y'all know this tongue can boast great things now. Oh, man, it can boast great things. But listen, behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Do you hear that? How great a matter do a little fire kindleth. This little old tongue, this little old tongue of fire, it can kindle up a whole lot of fire now. Listen. Listen to what it says in 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. That little old member in your mouth. The Bible says it is a tongue, is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. Listen now. That it defileth the whole body. That tongue of yours can defile your whole body. That tongue. Your mouth. Always moving. Bible said it can defile your whole body. Listen, and set it on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. That little tongue gonna lead you straight to hell. Uh, and, and, and for them that don't know, that is the, the lake of fire. It'll lead you straight to hell. That little old member. Or oh, it'll lead you to the grave first. Huh? That old tongue, listen now. That old tongue will lead you to the grave first. That hell. It'll lead you there first. You get the popping off at your mouth and all this and that, then somebody just shoot you. Then if you had to shut your mouth, just been quiet, you might not have got shot. But that tongue, it's an unruly member of the body. Unruly member. And the only thing that can tame that tongue is the Holy Ghost. Do you hear? Only thing that can tame that tongue is the Holy Ghost. Let's go to Romans 6. Let's go to Romans 6. Stay with me. We're coming to an end. 
Let's go to Romans 6. Romans 6 chapter. Romans 6 chapter. And we're going to start at the first verse. We're going to start at the first verse. Only thing can tame that tongue is the Holy Ghost. You got people walking around here just saying and doing any old thing because they don't have what they say they got. No Holy Ghost. If you got the Holy Ghost, they would be talking like that, living like that, doing all of these things that's against God. Amen. Not when you get the Holy Ghost. Because you will seek to do what's right. It's not always, when you're striving to please the Lord, it's not always going to make sense in your eyes. The Lord knows what's best for us. It's not always going to make sense in your eyes. Well, I, it don't make sense for me to do that. It don't make sense to do that. Everything is not going to make sense to you. Just do it. If the Bible said it, just do it. In Abraham's day, the Bible said, they staggered not. Whatever the Lord said, they did. Just do it. Just do it. Told Abraham to go kill his son. Abraham, you didn't hear Abraham crying and weeping. You know what he told his boy? Let's go. Because Abraham had faith in God. He knew that if I kill him, the Lord got the power to raise him back up. Do you understand? He got power to raise him back up. Faith. Amen. Becoming a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. Bible says all things become new. All things become new. <clears throat> Romans 6 and 1. Listen to what it says in that. What shall we say then? Listen to what Paul said. Shall we continue in sin that the grace may abound? Do we going to continue to to, 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 because we're not under the law, we continue in sin that grace may abound, Paul said. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized unto Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Listen now. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. When we go down in water, that symbolizes burial with Christ. Listen to what it says in that. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. When we come up out of that water, we should be walking in the newness of life. Striving to walk in the newness of life. We went down in water for our sins. When we come up, we have no sin. So we have to walk in newness of life. Newness of life. Listen to what it says. Listen to what it says here now. It says, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. We, the people of God, not out serving sin. Not out serving sin. Not living in sin. We're not doing that as the people of God. Listen to what it says here now. Seven. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. He's not going to die no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, listen now, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. 
Likewise, reckon ye also yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God. How? Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Everybody running around today is talking about that they got the Holy Ghost. Oh, that they saved. Oh, that they know the Lord. Now, you'd heard the name. But to know the Lord is to be in it and him in you. Amen. Because the Bible says, let's go to Acts. I'm going to show you what the scripture says. And then we're going to get out of here. Acts 5.32. I want to show you what the Bible says about this, uh, the Holy Ghost. I want, you to, I want you to listen good. Acts 5. Acts 5.32. Acts 5.32, when we get out of here, <clears throat> I'm going to show you what the Bible says about the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is just chapter and verse. Amen. I want to show you. I want to show you who God gives the Holy Ghost to. Do you hear me? I want to show you who the Lord gives the Holy Ghost to. Everybody now is talking about they got the Holy Ghost. Oh, they come in church, get a little jump and jerk. Amen. And because the music is gone, and they got a little jerk. All right, now they got the Holy Ghost. But when they get out of here, they'll cuss you out. When they get out of here, they go party. Amen. Sunday afternoon, they at the bar. Amen. But I want to show you who the Lord gives the Holy Ghost to. Amen. Acts 5, 32. Listen. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost. Listen now. Listen now. Whom God hath given to them that obey him. Do you see? The Holy Ghost is given to them that obey the Lord. You went around here talking about you that, that you got the Holy Ghost and won't do nothing that the Lord said. Live in any old kind of life. Any old kind of life. But you talking about that you saved. Sanctified. On your way to the kingdom. Still lying. Still swearing falsely. Still uh, committing fornication. Still living in adultery. But you talking about that you on your way to the kingdom. Amen. This is chapter and verse. The Bible says the Holy Ghost is given to them that obeys him. When the Lord show you that you in error of your ways, when he show you the error of your ways, you just got to make up in your mind that you are going to refrain from it. When the Lord show you the errors of your ways, you just got to make up in your mind to refrain from all the foolishness of the world. You got to change your life. You got to turn from it. Make up in your mind to turn from it. Do you understand? Just make up in your mind to turn. The Lord of God is good. Saints, we're going to leave it right there. Amen. But the word of God is good. I tell you, let's get the word of God in. hand. <laughs> word of God is good. Listen. No man can change what's written in the Bible. Amen. You can catch them there. Oh, man, they, they, they can go now. Man, they can inspirational preach. Man, how you up there crying, all of that. But it's deceitfulness. This word of God is rough. Hear me, I know. This word of God is rough. People, did it, it hurts the flesh. People don't want to follow this. They get into a situation and been in a situation for 20 and 30 years. Then the Lord come and shine some light on their lifestyle. Man, they all but cuss you out. All but cuss you out because of what the word said. When the word finds you, just say, Lord, thank you. Lord, I didn't know. Lord, but I thank you for having mercy upon me to show me the errors of my ways. But the people don't want it. 
People want to go to church where they can hear smooth things. Smooth things. Don't want the preacher to preach on nothing. The deacons control the church. Amen. Not here. All we have here is a faithful few. The Bible says, let the Lord build the house. Your labor is in vain. Amen. But the Lord is working things out. Because he said, my sheep shall hear my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. In due time, my sheep, he said, will hear my voice. So if they don't hear his voice, then that lets you know they're none of his sheep. You can try to show them the scriptures of the word of God, but they don't want to hear it. The Bible lets you know they're not his sheep. He said, my sheep, but hear my voice. Amen. Saints, we thank God for all things. Amen. And we're going to get ready to get out of here. Amen. And if all hearts and minds are clear, let us stand. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let the redeemed say amen, amen, and amen. 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 Amen.